competitor. Uh, we from roommates, shoot, from Eastern Arizona to here, like we always competed. But that's one person that I know that ain't gonna ever quit. And if he on your team, you you got a winner on your team. Being a leader, he you know works hard, playing basketball all the time. He's a good person. He's trying to help kids, you know, that wants to be better basketball players. I respect his realness, you know, he real blunt with it. He don't hide nothing from me. He, uh, he always keep it 100, he keep it the truth. You got a cramp? nobody's <laughs> gonna. Hey, he killed that. Are you winning now? Hey, I'm DeLove Woods of Spread the Love. I'm here with Mike James out of Portland, Oregon. Mike, you were like nominated on Twitter and Instagram for us to come over and interview you and do a day in the life. How does that make you feel? It's cool. I mean, I'm from Portland. It's nice to have people that look up to me and want to see what I'm doing. So that's interesting. So we're going to follow you around. Um, tell us a little bit about your daily schedule. You playing overseas. You're trying to stay in shape. Um, what's what's the average regiment look like on the, on a day to day for you? Um, I try to do three workouts. I try to do like a lift in the morning or a, a pool workout. Then I try to do uh, straight shots like an hour after that, and then I try to do an actual basketball workout in the afternoon just to keep on point. So, um, so being overseas, uh, the last place you were, Italy. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience over there and, and how your last season. Um, it was good, man. I mean, I liked Italy. It was probably one of the best countries I've ever been in as far as uh, the people and the food and stuff like that. And that stuff is important when you're away from your family nine months. But, I mean, um, I had a good season. I got MVP, and uh, but we lost in the first round on the buzzer beater, unfortunately. But, you know, I'm happy that I had the chance to go out there, and hopefully I get a chance to keep playing. And for the guys that are over here that don't know, um, I mean, the younger guys, high school, even college guys that want to get to the next level and play professionally, tell them a little bit about the work ethic that it takes to get to that level. I mean, you got to treat it like your job. I mean, in co high school and college, it's more just like something you like to do. But in, when you get out of college and stuff like that, it's your job. So every day has to be about basketball. You can't say, well, I'm going to go do this, I'm do that. That's why it's a come for first. Especially for me personally, I like to get my workouts done early, and then later I can just do whatever I want. So, I mean, that's just how I feel about it. And you're a product of Grant High School. Um, you went on to junior college. Tell us a little bit about the journey that you took and your path to lead you where you're at right now. Um, starting in high school, I didn't even start at Grant. I started at Central Catholic. My freshman year, and I transferred my sophomore year. Um, Grant was fun. It was a nice experience for me because at Central Catholic, it was kind of like I was basically just going to be the man. But at Grant, I kind of had to role player and had to play behind dudes. And then my senior year, I kind of turned into something like a main option. So it was easier that way. It, it kind of made me – it kind of humbled me and made me ready to play right. further in my career. And junior college, you were number three in the nation in scoring. Uh, is that is that right? My sophomore year. Sophomore year? Yeah, and then my freshman year, I was, I don't think I was ranked. I, don't, I averaged like 20, but that's, that wasn't nothing. 20 wasn't nothing? No, because we, we lost in the first round again. Dang. So, there's, there's two things we talked about, I lost in the first round. The, the 20 was nothing, so the 52, you had a 52-point game in college. What was that experience like? Do you even, like, remember the moment, or was it the video that kind of caught your attention? I remember it perfect, actually, because it was just it was my junior year in college when I was at Division One in Lamar, and I remember it perfect, really. I remember a lot of my games perfect though, but I remember it perfect just because it was a, it was a weird game because like it was a team we were supposed to blow out, and I came off the bench my junior year, so it was like a team we were supposed to blow out. But when I went in, we were like losing by like eight, and I was on the bench like kind of mad because I I really wanted to just blow them out and go home, but All right. I ended up hitting a few shots and I kind of heated up a little bit. So the scoring barrage, like how did it come? Free throws, twos, threes, how, how do you score your baskets? That game, I was like, I think I was 11 for 21 from the three-point line. You was gunning. 11 for 21 <laughs> is over 50%. That's a good percentage. Right from there. three? Yeah. You shot 21 threes in a game? Well, really, really, really <laughs> it was like, I was really like eight for 14. But then my coach said, you could break the record. 
keep shooting. And everybody and everybody on my team was like, just keep shooting. And so the other the last like three threes was really just me getting it. But that's cool, man. Congratulations on that feat. A lot of people will never see fifty two points in a game, maybe not even a season for a lot, man. So congratulations to you on that. Um you got a basketball camp coming up at Grand High School. Um tell us about what brought this on and you know, you want to give back to the community and such. Um really actually playing in Seattle. Like if you ever notice in Seattle, they have like a, I don't even know, like they funnel kids. Like right. the older people look out for the younger people and they just basically just funnel them to go into Division One into the NBA. That's why they have such a great basketball community out there. And so since I felt like I was an older person now and I, people look up to me, I just felt like I need to do a camp for free. It's a free camp. And just to help kids go along, they can meet everybody that's overseas. I'm going to have a lot of overseas people that's from Portland. Have some that's not from Portland. I'm gonna have Division One players there. Some NBA players are gonna stop by. So I just felt like to give the kids something that we really didn't get when we were growing up. Like we had a camp, but like not everybody came back to do it. Not every basketball player came back to do it. Right. So they get to see like, oh, I remember him from high school. I watched him, or yeah. I seen him play in the playoffs, like stuff like that. Cool. And what's the weeks um, for people that need the information, the the dates for the camps, the age groups? Um, yeah. And maybe a couple of players that are going to show up. Um, it's June 23rd through the 27th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And who can I let go right now? Um, Division One, Andrew Andrews will be there from Washington. Um, who else can I let go? And Martel Webster will be there from the Washington Wizards. Okay. And what's the age groups for the camp? High school, high school only. Seniors don't count. The people that just were seniors that graduated don't count, but eighth graders coming in and people already in high school count. Well, my best uh, me and Mike story, shoot, probably our just drive to Eastern uh, going into our sophomore year. Like, that's when we, like, that's when I realized, came to the realization that I wasn't the basketball player that I thought I was, you know. And I was like, Mike, well, during the ride, telling him basically, this is, this is your year. Keep going, keep going, don't give up. He's telling me, you got to keep going too. But I knew basketball wasn't for me no more. So that's why I ain't even pushing him no more. I'm, I'm glad for him and everything that he got. So like, he's like, get me too. So. Look at this rock, bro. They like fishes over here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. I'm like, damn. They doing it with no power in the way. That's the everyday routine, probably. Yeah. The difference I see between me and you, you hustle just to make it through me. I hustle just to make it three, find a flip, six, twelve. Oh, uh, look at this. Oh, uh, got wrist before I'm 24. Got another grind. Do it for the love. You can't do it for everybody else or recognition or whatever. Because when you start doing it for that, then other stuff starts creeping in. If you're doing it for love, then you're gonna be you're gonna be true to your craft. You're gonna worry about playing basketball. You're not gonna be worried about oh, let me put this on Instagram and let people know I'm in the gym. You just gonna go there just because you want to be there and because you got to do it. Like he never gave up uh, his motivation. He's a motivator, and he wants to get. The, he wants to do the right things with basketball. He wants to give back and what he didn't get, you know. So he wants to help the weak kid that nobody want to help because that was him, you know. So. Yeah. No 
Mike, been around for a long time in my life. He's like a big brother to me. And um, to describe him, he more laid back and uh, he real confident, not cocky. He's confident in what he do. And um, he a problem on the basketball court, of course. Yeah. Million dollar dreams in the jam sport. Million dollar dreams in the jam sport. Uh, get a real they ask for. Get a real they ask for. Uh, million dollar dreams in the jam sport. Million dollar dreams in the jam sport. Uh, get a real they ask for. What they ask for? Uh, now I'm back in this deep. Now, 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 now I'm back in this room. Man, I showed up, showed out. Now fans packing them shows. Okay, I'm landlord of this shit. Uh -huh. Got plans for a new whip. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to go from a bus pass to a passport. And this beef, okay. Million dollar dreams in the jam sport. Get a real what they ask for. They play your shit and get mad, bored and press fast forward on that trash, boy. I grew up in the north side, mad poor. About a year, I've been sleeping on the damn floor. And go without this shit. Really got that shit. Give a fuck if I ever win a damn award. They got time to be wasting time. That slow grind, I'm off that. Mind it's the Love Woods here. Spread the love. I'm chilling over at Denny's with Mike James with me. Um, how was your morning workout? It was cool. We had to drive around a little bit because uh, LA Fitness wouldn't let him shoot in there. So, but it's whatever. It was cool. And um, you getting ready to go do another workout right now? I just want to ask you this: um, being overseas, what was your typical daily routine when you're getting up? practice time eating like your general schedule while you overseas man well i sleep late as possible when i'm overseas for some reason so if we got practice at like nine i i'll wake up at like 8 30 and go and try to get there like i was close to so like i get there like 8 40. we lift practice go eat lunch with the team we didn't we don't have no regular restaurant but we just normally we all try to eat lunch together just all stay together then go back to the room play some games chill maybe stretch a little bit then go back to practice then after that dinner and sleep it sounds very boring but that's that is life every day that's the life pretty much there ain't nothing else to do really and music wise while you over there um tell us what you listen to oh i, gotta, I listen to my guy wale <laughs> J. Cole, who else do I listen to? Fab, and Jay-Z, them is my four favorite, it was all. You like the lyricist? Yeah, kinda, something like that. And food over there, what's the what's the worst food experience that you had overseas in general? All the Italian people are gonna be mad at me, but the south of Italy, the hotel food is horrible. <laughs> Every time we went, it was like, they gave us like some pasta, ragu. It was the pasta was hard, like they didn't cook it all the way, and they gave us some chicken, and it was like overcooked. Every time though, it wasn't just like one time we went. It was like that. Every time we went to the south of Italy and ate in a hotel, me and my other uh, American teammate would just be like, "Bro, we gotta go somewhere else and eat, bro, because we can't eat this." It was horrible. One time I went to the grocery store and I was over in Germany, and I thought I was getting some chicken. And it was like pork chop, bro. And I, oh, I really don't like pork like that. But I couldn't read. And so the language, I was like, I look like chicken, but it was like a pork. And it was so horrible, man. I had a couple bad food experiences over there. But. Yeah, I had some bad food experiences. And what's your ultimate goal? You playing already professionally overseas. What's, what's some of your ultimate goals that you have? Um, to play in the NBA. I mean, Everybody's dream when they little, even before they know if they can play basketball or not, is, ooh, I want to play in the NBA. Ooh, I want to play in the NFL. So, NBA. You're going to play in the NBA. Keep your focus and determination, man. Like, when I see people working hard and they got their grind right, I, I know it and I respect it, man, and I wish you the best of luck, man. Good luck to you. Appreciate it. Uh, I went to high school with Mike. He's like a mentor to me. Uh. He was a TA in my class. Uh, he helped me with all my work and stuff, and he just was like a big brother all around in high school. But I just hope he succeeds later on in life with the basketball. So we sitting here, man. You got quite a shoe collection sitting here in front of you. Um, tell us a little bit about your favorite play shoes that you play in, that you hoop in, and then some of your casual wear. 
um, when you go out and you want to just show people what you got? When I go out, I don't like wearing my favorite stuff because then it get dirty and then I'd be upset. But um, I got a few shoes, man. I've been I've been buying shoes for a little bit, but nothing special. But um, yeah, these are some I bought. The AI is the questions. They're nice. I don't know why they came like this, but I ain't never messed with them or nothing. So these are some nice shoes I like. I just think they're cool because of the colors, really. I think they're really the all-star ones, but I don't really, I don't know for sure. Philly. They could be, but I, they got this gold thing on the back, but it makes me think like they Olympics or, or all-star. Sure yeah, yeah, so. yeah, they made me think like they not. Um, well, speaking of gold, these, uh, these is Kalanji's favorite, actually. And he cut my hair, by the way. But these are Kalan <laughs> these are Kalanji's favorite. Go let Kalanji cut your hair. If yeah. you need a haircut, Kalanji, hit him up. Right. right right here below. Right. And then uh, he actually told me to show these off. So, you know, shout out to Kalanji. These is one of my favorites. They old. They kind of cracking. I'm sad. But these is one of my favorites. I had them for forever. I'm going to be sad when they go all the way. But right now, I'm trying to preserve them for sure for a while. And those that do the right thing, threes? Yeah, they are. They need new laces. And this is ugly, but I love them. And I can't let them go. Devontae wanted me to show these. <laughs> I only wore these like once. These are nice. Everybody loves 11s, so I guess I had to show a pair. You remember what year these came out? No, I don't remember at all, actually. I think... These is the 2010 ones, though. 2010? 2010? Yeah, I yeah. think these are 2010 ones, though. I think the other year they came out, it was like 01 or 02 or something like that. Uh, these, are the, these are just some ones I wanted to show because nobody bought them. They had awkward colors, so, you know, people don't like awkward colors, and I do. So that's why I get I got these. Those match yeah, like, you. Yeah, they cream, I'm cream. <laughs> we just flow good together. So this is why I bought these. Um, these are my favorite, these might be my favorite Jordan all time, I really don't know why, but I just, they're real, just smooth for some reason, and I like them, they're my favorite Jordan all time probably, cool. even though, you know, even though threes ain't my favorite Jordan, but these are my favorite Jordan. What are your favorite, what's your favorite number? To wear once, probably the once, what? I don't know why, but they are. To hoop in. Threes. Threes. Yeah. But I don't hoop in. Well, I did hoop in some Jordans this year, but mostly I hoop in Kobe's. These are my new hoop shoe for this year. I bought them at the S. Not going to break them out until I go overseas again or wherever I end up. So these are my hoop shoe for this year. I'll probably only hoop in them for about nine games because I like switching my shoes a lot. What'd you hoop in this season? I hooped in like three pair of Kevin Durant's, two Kobe's. Two Jordans. Good variety. Yeah, yeah. I like to switch it up. I don't like hooping in the same thing for too long. So if you could only keep three pairs of shoes, what three would you pick? It's hard, I know. Do these count as hooping too? Or? In life, you get three pairs of shoes. What do you pick? That I already have? No, anything you want. Oh. Well, I'm keeping these because he's my favorite. I'm keeping one of my shoes over there that I don't have. It's kind of, they're kind of nicer. Don't worry about that. And then I'm going to keep some Kobe's to hoop in. So one pair of J's, one pair of Kobe's, and then some casual dress shoes. Yeah. You want to pull them out so people can see? Ooh. I'll just keep these just because they're different. And tell everybody what these are. These are uh, Balenciagas. Can you spell that? B A L E N C I A G A. For all you guys out there. Balenciaga. Authentic. Yeah, I hope so. I bought it at the Balenciaga store, so they better be authentic. Right on, right or else on, we man. fighting. So those Jordans and a pair of Kobe's. To hoop in, yeah. Right on. Hey man, we at the venue. This might be my birthday party. It's nice. Check him out. Be here, man. Trying to figure out some dates. Hey, it's gonna be amazing. If you miss this, you're gonna be real, real mad at yourself and upset.
Look at it. Ooh, what? You better get here. Get here now. You might as well just come down and just wait. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? I love you, bro, and I'm proud of you, bro. Everything that you're doing, you're doing the right thing. This ain't, this ain't, this only beginning. You can't get satisfied. You keep going like you've been doing. You wanna play for the Blazers? You can play for the Blazers. Let's get it. Uh, people are starting to know his name, and I wish him the best of luck going on with his career. Uh, just continue the hard work. Uh, go hard in your workouts all the time. Uh, make sure you stay focused and. Don't get distracted and keep up the good work. He could do better than Chalmers and, and, and Norris Cole. I put my bottom dollar on that one. <laughs>